Hello everyone, welcome back to the class. In the last class, we were talking about holography and therein we learned about inline hologram and there we found that there is some limitations which inline hologram exhibits. Now to rectify those limitations, a new type of hologram has been proposed and uh, this is called off axis hologram and Leith and Upnaik successfully developed this method and uh, they were successful in separating these uh, twin images where twin images means the one virtual image and the real image which we we found that they were overlapping in um, on axis hologram Leith and Upnaik they used the separate reference beam derived from the same source to regard the hologram while in the on axis hologram we found that there was one source which was illuminating the object semi transparent object and the part of the light which was transmitting uh, this semi transparent object was working as a reference beam. But here a separate reference beam wa was used and a separate beam which goes to the object and then get scattered they, these two beams uh, combine at the photographic plate. But both of these beam originate from the same source. Now the new reference beam was incident on the photographic plate at an offset angle theta to the beam from the object and the complex amplitude due to the object beam at any point x y on the photographic plate this can be written in this form O x y is equal to modulus of O x y and its phase part here in this exponential part. Now the schematic representation of this off axis hologram is shown here in figure number 7 where you see that we have a source from source the reference beam is directed to the photographic plate and from object we are uh, the photographic plate is also re receiving the scattered waves yeah from object we see scattered wave okay the object is also illuminated from the same source yeah and the reference beam is also being generated from the same source and then these two one beam goes to the object get scattered and then again falls on the photographic plate while the reference beam directly falls on the photographic plates and there they combine and they generate a hologram. Now this process is called recording of off axis hol uh, hologram. Now you see that the scattered beam is inclined at angle theta with respect to the reference beam. Now the complex amplitude due to the reference beam is represented by R which is the same representation we used in the on axis hologram and here r is represented by r e to the power i 2 pi xi r x where xi r is sin theta by lambda theta is the same angle which we saw here in this figure this is the theta. Now the resultant intensity at the photographic plate would be r plus o modulus square yeah here we are using the superposition principle now we will substitute the values of r and O from equation number 20 and 21 respectively and after substitution we finally get equation number 24 which is the resultant intensity at the photographic plate due to both reference beam and the scattered beam or beam from the object. Now the amplitude and the phase of the object wave are therefore encoded as amplitude and phase modulation of a set of interference fringes that is equivalent to carrier with a spatial frequency of xi r which is very much obvious from equation number 24. Yeah. Now following the similar analysis what we did in case of inline hologram the amplitude transmission in this hologram is also expressed by this expression where t is equal to t naught beta t and uh, i. Yeah. Now, if you substitute for i from equation number 24, then you get this detailed expression of 25. Yeah, I just want to represent transmittance t is equal to t naught. T naught is the background transmittance, and then beta t into i. This is the same expression which we used in case of inline hologram. The same is being used here, but now the intensity i is replaced by equation number 24 in this state. And now this is the transmittance which we receive from the hologram. Now 
to reconstruct the image, the hologram is illuminated once again with the same reference beam used to record it. Now, once you illuminate the hologram, we will see some uh, transmission beam and there we expect the hologram to be formed. Now, this is how the reconstruction is done in uh, off axis hologram. We, this is the holographic plate or the recorded hologram which is illuminated with a reference beam the same reference beam which we use to record the hologram and from here what we see is that a part of the beam goes in this direction which gives us a real image and and here we get virtual image. The part of the light get directly transmitted which is seen here and apart from this directly transmitted light we see some halos in some off axis a bit off axis position. We will talk about these in the next coming incoming slides. Now, the complex amplitude of the transmitted wave is given by the transmission function which we derived in the last slide multiplied by r, r is the complex amplitude of the reference beam. Now, if you multiply r with t then we will get a big expression and there are there uh, would be four term in that big expression. Let us represent those four term as u1, u2, u3 and u4 where u1 is given by this expression, u2 by this, u3 by this and u4 by this. Now, in u1 you see that it is independent of O, it does not have any information of the object therefore, it is not of our interest. Yeah, while all other three terms they have O and therefore, they can form the image. Now, the first term, yeah, now let us talk about the first term which is u1 x y, it is merely the attenuated reference beam which is a plane wave directly transmitted through the hologram. This directly transmitted beam is surrounded by a halo due to the second term u 2 x y whose angular spread is determined by the extent of the object. Now, you see here that u 2 x y has mod of o square which is a small term. Now, this is the term which is responsible for this halo which we see here in the transmitted beam. Okay. Now, transmitted beam is surrounded by this halo which have their origin in u 2 term and u 1 is the directly transmitted beam which does not have any information about the object. Now, the terms of our interests are u 3 and u 4. Now, if you see the u 3 term it is beta t r square into o. Okay, if you remove one r from here, then this is identical with the original object wave yeah? and this term produces a virtual image of the object, u 3 term produces the virtual image of the object. Now, virtual image is produced in its original position and this wave makes an angle theta with the directly transmitted wave as shown here in this figure. Now, you see that this wave which is forming the virtual image, it is uh, inclined at angle theta with the reference wave. Similarly, the fourth term which is u 4, it gives rise to the conjugate image. However, fourth term includes a factor e to the power i 4 pi xi r x. Okay. Instead of two, 2 pi, here we see that it is 4 pi, which indicates that the conjugate wave is deflected from the z axis at an angle twice that of which the reference wave makes with it. Yeah? It is deflected by a larger angle and this is why here in this figure you see that the real image is formed here yeah? and this angle is larger which is. Uh, now, this is why it is said that this exponential term where we have e to the power i 4 xi r x, it indicates that the conjugate wave is deflected from the z axis at an angle twice that which the reference wave makes with it yeah and this is our z direction and deflection is larger here now here you see that the two images virtual and real they are not collinear okay even though two two images one real and the other virtual are reconstructed in this arrangement, they are formed at different angles, different angles from the directly transmitted beam and from each other. Okay. 
and therefore, if you view them, they will not fall in the same line of view. Okay, you can uh, see them uh, separately, and at a, since they are at a different angle, you can uh, clearly distinguish them. They are not overlapping uh, on top of each other. Now, therefore, this off-axis holography method it does not have the limitations which we saw in case of inline hologram. Now, the holography holds a lot of applications and uh, a few of them are listed here. The first one is in microscopy and high resolution volume imagery, the second is in interferometry, in imaging through distorting media and then holography is also used in uh, data storage. Yeah. This is all about holography and uh, I end uh, my lecture here and see you in the next class. Thank you for joining me.